Okay, so to create embroidery objects, we need to digitize. There are two ways of digitizing. There is the auto digitize and digitize. You've got toolboxes here for all the tools you need to make your designs and the, um, so you can choose to open any of these toolboxes to get to the actual tools by clicking on them. Um, you've also got lettering and monogramming, applique tools, cutwork tools, mirror merge and arrange. And if you've got the Designer Plus version, you'll have some more toolboxes there as well. But for now, we only need the digitizing and the auto digitize. So I'm doing this in the creator level software. So to auto digitize, you need a graphic, some sort of picture that you convert into embroidery objects automatically that's why it's called auto digitizing we're going to leave that for the moment because i want you to have an understanding of what the process of digitizing is before you auto digitize um, auto digitizing can save you some time if you've got a good graphic and i'll talk all about that later on so let's open the digitize toolbox so we're going to left click on it once we get our little hand with the finger pointing, we can left click. So over the word and it will expand out the digitizing tools. And again, if you've got the designer plus version, you will have more tools than this in your toolbox. But we're going to start with the basics. So we'll start with these. So you can digitize an open object or a closed object. An open object is a line, basically some sort of line of stitching. It can be any of the outlines that you have available down here in the bottom toolbar. So again, Designer Plus has got more options here, but um, the basic ones are your single um, outline. And as you hover over each one, you'll get a prompt. You'll see that single outline settings. You can create different settings for these, but we'll just use the defaults for the moment. There's a triple outline. There's a sculpture run, which does a bowl, uh, three stitches, then one stitch, then three stitches. So um, the triple outline does three stitches, then moves on and does three more stitches on top of each other. Then you have a back stitch, a stem stitch, a zigzag, a satin, a raised satin, and a blanket stitch. And of course, if you've got Designer Plus, you'll have a few more. So let's start with a single outline open object. So I'm clicking on open object and I'm going to click on the single outline and you can choose a color to digitize that outline in. The default is this dark blue. To choose another color, you will just click on it. So if you wanted red, you would click on the red and the active color shows up here at the far left. So the red color has got a black box around it and the active color is showing here as red as well. Actually, I'll just leave it on red for now. So to create a line or an object, and in this case, it's going to be a line because it's an open object and it's an outline, um, you can't have a fill they're grayed out all the fills you can't select a fill for an open object because it can't fill where the object is not closed okay so to create the object you've got two sorts of clicks you've got a left click so if I left click I get a dot there um, and you've got a right click so I can also right click but I'll just do some left clicks to start with so if I left click I can go anywhere else I like and left click and then I can go anywhere else I like and left click and you'll notice I'm creating straight lines um, if I just wanted a single straight line I would make two clicks but I'm making a shaped line now the right clicks make curves so if I right click here you'll notice this bit didn't curve but when I right click again it creates a curve so even though this was a straight line until I made my next click it changed to a curve because this was a right click here I'll just backspace backspace will undo what you've done so 
I've got straight left clicks here and I've got a straight line. Now I'm going to right click here and as you can see that's a straight line. Now I'm going to left click here and you'll see I still get the same curve. The difference is that if I go on now that line will be a straight line because no matter how many clicks I do because this here was a left click. So you just need to play around with those left and right clicks to see what happens. So if I go right click, right click, there's my curve created. Um, so it creates back to the previous click and on to the next click. And I can continue right clicking to continue making curves. So what I suggest is you create some lines doing that to make the stitches happen you have to press the enter button on your keyboard because the software doesn't know that you're finished it's waiting for you to make the next click but if you don't want to make any more clicks you can just press enter and as you can see there I have turned this into stitches now and I have an object in my color film the first object so it's showing up here and I'm showing color blocks so if I click on the top here it'll show individual items but I only have one object so there's only one showing or I can go back to color blocks. So that's an open object. Now I'll zoom out so I can get a bit of clean space here and I'm going to make a closed object. So I click on the closed object and I can do the same thing. I can left and right click to create a shape. Now when I want the object to close, it will close from the last click I did to the first click I did. So um, I'm just going to backspace and do that again so I can tell you as I go around what clicks I'm doing. So I'm doing a left click, a right click, a right click, a right click. And because this last one was a right click, it should curve back to close over there. So if I press enter, as you can see, I got a curved line. Now it's still an outline because that's what I'd chosen down the bottom here. So let me do one where I do a left click as the last object. So I'll left click, right click, right click, right click, left click. And now when I press enter, I get a straight line because this was a left click and this last one was a, the last one I did was a left click. That's probably the most important. So it it is going to it knows it has to be a straight line and it has created a straight line. So it all depends on the click you do, what shape you get of the line and it just takes practice. Now because these are oh let's before we do anything else, let's choose a different type of um outline type so let's choose the satin one this time and let's go around with a satin stitch so left click right click right click right click now I right click so I'm going to get a curved line to close the object when I press enter so now I've got a satin line here. I'm making really big objects because I haven't got a grid on and I have no idea how big these are because I don't know what zoom level I'm in. But it looks very narrow, but if I was on one to one, it would be um, about, it would be, look a lot thicker if I was um, looking at it one to one. As you can see, uh, sorry, I'm zoomed out 50%. Let's go to one to one. Okay, now I'm in one to one. Now. You can't see the whole screen so how you move around the screen is zooming in and out is one way so you can zoom in and then you move your cursor to where you want to zoom into so if I put my cursor over here that's where I'm going to zoom into okay if I put and I zoom out again if I put my cursor over here I can zoom in there so um, that's one way to find your objects now as you can see in my color film I've got all these objects but they're all in the same little box because I'm in color block mode and they're all the same color if I click on this color film uh, um, show objects icon I will get all the individual objects okay let's do one with a fill in it this time so I'll find myself some clear space and so because I've got closed object chosen up here for my digitizing tool I can now choose a fill type so um, I'll choose the step fill which is 
used for most digitising objects, um, or, but you have other options available, and again, in the Designer Plus, you have even more. But let's start with a step fill, and I'm going to do four left clicks this time. So left click, left click, left click, left click, click, and enter to close the object. And I've got a rough rectangle sort of shape, um, but it's filled with fill stitch. Okay, now we'll create one with one of the other fill stitches. So let's use the um, fancy fill. Now that is this little icon down here with the hatching on it. So I'm going to choose a closed object and I'm going to choose the fancy fill. And I'll just get a bit of clear space here and I'll start my clicking. Oh, I lost my closed object. Just check that you've got the actual tool um, and I haven't got the fancy fill. There we go. Now I've got it. Uh, make sure they're highlighted blue. Um, and then we can left click, right click, right click, left click, right click, right click. You can see here this looks like it's still all curved even though I've got a left click in here. It's because these two clicks were right clicks and they've affected the lines leading to that left click. But it will be, um, <clears throat> when I get to reshaping in another video, that could be useful. Um, I'll put a little left click in here and I'm going to enter. So I'll get a nice point there because my last click was a left click. There we go. And you can see here, this one's got um, a fancy fill, which is an embossed looking type of fill. It's kind of like a satin stitch, but there are needle penetrations which cause this pattern. So if I go out of true view and I show the needle points, you can actually see the pattern where the needle points are creating that pattern all those little white dots very close together and these ones are a bit further apart but they do define that diamond shape so if we go back into true view there's that diamond shape and here's another diamond there so there are various fancy fills you can choose this is the default one so um, i will show you how to choose other fancy fills later on um, we will just try the pattern fill now so i'm going to go I've still got my closed object, but I'm going to click on the pattern fill and just create a random object. Enter. And this is a more open fill. So it's created with lots of little running stitches creating a pattern. Um, and so this is called pattern fill. And you can see that it does not have any stitching underneath it because it is so light on the fabric. It doesn't well you wouldn't want stitching underneath because you'd see it for a start um, and um, it's as it is very light on the fabric it will work quite well without any under stitching um, the other thing that happens too is that there are some areas where it's stitched around the edges um, to move to stitch the next part and I'll look at all of that in future videos but as you can see there are so many options of what you can create with the software that um, and just with a few left and right clicks you can create all sorts of shapes